Frost Mage Guide. Hello there, YouTube. We are going to be talking about Frost Mage today, talking about talents, honor talents, gearing, stat priority, um, rotation, uh, enchants, everything you need to know for playing Frost Mage in patch 8.1. Um, so let's jump into it. <laughs> you might be like, why do you have fire gear on? Um, I actually reforged my gear from fire to frost back and forth. Um, so I'll just be talking about the traits on my fire gear, but I actually have it locked into fire right now. And like the number one question, like let's, let's just jump into this before the video even starts. Why am I playing fire instead of frost recently in all of my videos? The reason I've been playing fire is because it bursts really, really hard. G Pi, Meteor, Combustion, Fire Blast, Fire Blast. There's so much burst from fire that just makes it really, really fun. With Frost, we don't quite get that same feeling of burst. You have Orb, eh, Comet Storm, eh. We have some burst, but it doesn't come very frequently and it doesn't hit very hard. So that's why, like I said, I'll play Frost when Blizzard gives Frost some more single target burst. Keyword, single target, single target burst. Um... So let's take a look at traits first, guys. So we have uh, just enough, the best traits, Tunnel of Ice and Flash Freeze. The TLDR, Tunnel of Ice and Flash Freeze. So I would actually pick this helmet that I'm wearing currently, and I'd go with um, Flash Freeze right here and Tunnel of Ice right here. The best thing you could do is get triple Tunnel, triple Flash Freeze, and your Frost Bolts are doing a lot more damage, and your Ice Skulls are doing a lot more damage. That is the way to go. Um, if you really need to, you could go with Battlefield Focus instead, but really go for Tunnel and Flash Freeze. And another not terrible trait, like if you don't have those, is to go wide out as well. Um, in the shoulder piece, um, I actually don't have, I don't have the correct shoulder piece, but the shoulder piece for me, I would be going Flash Freeze on the outside. And on this inside one, I'd probably be going probably inside the pack. But like I said, you want to go for the Tunnel of Ice and the Flash Freeze um, shoulders. And then for the chest piece, once again, I do have the correct chest piece, so it would be Flash Freeze. I would reforge this to Flash Freeze and Tunnel of Ice. So, boom, very basic. That's what I do for traits. Easy peasy. As far as stat priority, I'm going to be going with Haste, Versatility, Mastery, and then Crit. I think Verse and Mastery are, are almost the same, by the way, for Frost. I don't think it matters that much. So if you want to go Haste, Mastery, Verse, Crit, that's fine too. Or Haste, Verse, Mastery, Crit. They're very, very similar in value. I think Verse is probably slightly better, but I don't think the value is uh, that that different. For, so for example, if you had a Haste, Verse piece at 380 and a Haste, Mastery piece at 390, just wear the Haste, Mastery piece at 390, right? And since they're so similar in value for Frost. Um, as far as trinketing, um, go, well, as far as enchants goes, just haste enchants all the way. We want quick navigation on the weapon. Um, as far as gearing goes, guys, maledict 1000%. If you have maledict, equip it, turn your brain off, never think about it again. Maledict is the way to go if you have it. Um, and then for the off slot, you can either go safeguard, which I've been preferring recently, um, just so you don't die without blocking, because that happens from time to time, unfortunately. Um, and then you can also throw the Insignia on as well instead of that Safeguard if you want to go for a little bit more offensive, a little bit more burst um, with that Insignia choice. So it's kind of up to you guys um, there on that one. So that's pretty much covers Azurite Trades, Gearing, Enchant, Stat, Prio, um, stuff like that. Um, but we're going to be looking at Honor Talents and um, Normal Talents for Frost Mage. So we're going to always 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 be picking ice nova currently you can it's, it's more control because it frees them in place it's more burst because you can pair it with common storm and ice nova it's um it's good damage within itself right um if you go lonely winner you lose water ellie which means you lose the control of ice nova and you lose the control from the water ellie it's just not good um bone chilling isn't terrible if you're trying to maximize dps and keep some control but i think ice nova is just 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 the play um, Shimmer, once again, just never, never unspec Shimmer in PvP combat. I don't like saying never, but yeah, always pick, sh yeah, never, don't pick, yeah, Shimmer is the play. Definitely just go Shimmer. Yep, don't have to think about that one. And Canner's Flow, um, really good 99.9% .9 of the time. Mirror Images, great if you're playing World PvP duels or 2v2s against, like, like uh, a rogue mage, you know, and they don't have a healer. You just pop mirrors, the mirror solos them, and it's just good value all around. So mirrors in those cases, but every game in threes and canners, almost every game in twos and canners, mirrors is just this one little special pick that it's like, oh, nice, it'll help me in a duel or in a world PvP situation, but not quite in serious 3 arena. This 60 row is something that you can kind of go back and forth on. 
Ebon Bolt is good and Frozen Touch is good. They both have value. Um, they're both not great. They're both kind of eh, but they both have some type of like, okay, with Ebon Bolt, it's, it's um, a Frost ability now. So you get locked in Frost, you cannot cast Ebon Bolt like in Legion, but it's still good because you can burst with it if you don't have any other burst, but the burst is pretty mediocre. Whereas Frozen Touch, it's 20% more often which gives you a 20% more of a chance than it already has. So it's like if Brain Freeze, um, it just gives you a couple percent more, right? So if Brain Freeze normally, um, let's see here on the map, normally it's 25 chance to empower Flurry. You spec Frozen Touch, Brain Freeze goes to 30, right? It doesn't add the 20%, it only gives you 5% more. So that it's not bad, it gives you a bit more consistency, you lose out on the Burst of Ebon. Oh, either way is good. I almost prefer Frozen Touch myself, which is weird. I think a lot of people play Evan, but I think I, I don't know. You could you could make arguments for either one, and I would go with whatever you're more comfortable with here. Now in the 75 row, I would always play Ring of Frost if you're playing with a Rogue, uh, if you're playing with a Feral, if you're playing any set up burst compositions, right? Frigid Winds if you're playing Dampening, like warlock mage sometimes we be shadow priest mage where you're sitting back you're slowing the enemies you're not just setting up one two three go burst run it's more like we're just trying to slow everything down maybe moonkin mage shadow priest mage um warlock mage stuff like that so double caster mage now ring of frost with the setups the rogue mage the feral mage the warrior mage to really land the cc on the healer maybe some cross cc on the other guy and then burst the main target um comet storm always Okay, 99% of the time, Comet Storm. You could go Freezing Rain and some random twos comps where you throw Orb and Blizzard to dampen a bit harder when you're playing with the healer yourself. I would not recommend it. I would say almost always Comet Storm. Let's just, let's just pretend I didn't say that. Go Comet Storm. There we go. It's just such a good ability for bursting, pairing with Ice Nova. Uh, Freezing Rain just has the smallest little use case ever. Um, Ray of Frost, Glacial or Thermal. A lot of people seem to think Glacial's good. I don't think it is. I think Ray of Frost is absolutely the move here. In my opinion, Glacial sucks because it doesn't do that much damage and it takes away from your icicles, right? So if you think about it logically, Glacial Spike removes your abilities to cast icicles instantly and instead gives you this ability called Glacial Spike. Your mastery essentially gives you icicles. So by picking Glacial, you get, get rid of your mastery in return for this spell which a lot of the times you can't get off. It's not worth it. You lose a lot of damage. You lose a lot of instant cast damage for a spell that doesn't hit hard that you might never get to use. It's just bad. Like I, In my opinion, it's not worth it unless it's hitting for like someone's entire life bar pretty much, right? Because it's so hard to actually build it up. So Ray of Frost, in my opinion. And the interesting thing about Ray of Frost is it's not good in itself really, but it allows you to keep your mastery. It allows you to keep those instant cast icicles. So that's why I pick Ray. It's also good if someone's running around a pillar, you start channeling the Ray and it's like, if they run away, then it kills them. And if they run towards you, then well, they're low HP. So then they can't really line anyway. So it's just good or good. Um, so Ray of Frost went on a retreating enemy behind a pillar since you can start the channel before they go out of line of sight. Um, Trinket, so PVP talents guys. Always play Gladiator's Medallion unless you're a human, then you can play Relentless. I would never play Adaptation. So Gladiator's Medallion unless you're a human. Um, for PvP talents, Deep Shatter, Concentrated Coolness, and Temp Shield is my auto lock-in, but I will change it up from time to time to go um, Kleptomania against Resto Druids instead of Temp. Um, you could drop Concentrated Coolness as well. Sometimes if I want to play super defensive, so say I'm playing Priest Mage versus Priest Mage 2v2, so just double Priest Mage 2v2, you can play this and drop Orb, which means you have the regular Orb, but you have Temp and Priz Cloak um, to actually have a lot of, you know, defensive for your class. Uh, that's pretty much all I would change. Like, the talents aren't super crazy here. You could go Dampen Magic instead of Temp against an Affliction Warlock or a Shadow Priest or in 2v2 or in 3s against, like, Shadow Priest Affliction. Um, but even then, like, I don't, I don't know if Dampen gets that much value, uh, but you could mess around with Dampen as well. But pretty much Temp, Contra to Cool, and Deep Shatter... Um, is the way to go for those PvP talents. I'm going to quickly fly over here to the test dummies and show you guys basically how I'm doing damage as a Frost Mage. And like I said, Frost Mages aren't there for the big, big burst. They're really, 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 really not. They're there for the control. They're a really hard target to kill because they have all the slows. And then they're there for, you know, just a little bit like polymorphs, 
and slows and then a little bit of burst to finish the targets off but if you are going to burst this frost you're going to be it's going to be looking something like this you're going to be casting frost bolts in your downtime you're going to be getting icicles um you want to buff in a left of course but you're going to be getting icicles you have like five icicles maybe some procs and maybe a, a brain freeze then you're like okay i'm ready to go you're going to pop icy veins if you have it you're going to orb comet storm pet nova ice nova spam ice lance you can throw your maledict in there as well um and then once all of your procs are gone that's when you want to flurry ice lance right notice notice what pop quiz what did you guys notice there i didn't cast right there's no chance to get kicked i didn't cast frost bolts i didn't cast ebon bolts and i didn't cast ray of frost you don't want to cast as a frost mage when you're bursting because if you get locked you can't do anything right so you really want to do orb instant cast comet storm instant cast pet nova instant cast ice nova instant cast maledict instant cast ice lance instant cast flurry instant cast there is no casting, all right? The number one mistake I see for Frost Mages across the board at lower ratings is they cast Frostbolt when they're trying to do damage. Oh, no! Frostbolt. Guys, you don't deal damage with Frostbolt. You build damage with Frostbolt. You build damage with Frostbolt. Let me say it again. You build damage with Frostbolt. You don't do damage with Frostbolt, okay? You... You cast Frost Bolts to get the Icicles, to get the procs, to get the slows, get momentum. Boom! Orb, Common Storm, Ice Nova. Burst. Ice Lance Flurry. No Frost Bolts when you're bursting. Oh, got that off my chest. Whew. Let's go. Okay, so Ebon Bolt, um, you can burst with it. And Ray, you can burst with it. But I would only use these two options if you have no Orb, Comet Storm, Ice Nova, Ice Lance Flurry. If you already exhausted all of those options, then think about casting an Ebon Bolt. And if you have no Ebon Bolt, then think about casting a Ray of Frost, especially if they're running around a pillar. That is your damage rotation as a Frost Mage. That's how you're pretty much going to be playing. Um, as far as control, you want to be casting Blizzard to get uh, the slows out, to get your orb back off cooldown. As far as the control, you want to be Frost Bolting multiple targets to get them nice and slow. Cone of Cold, Pet Nova, Ice Nova. Your the whole map is frozen. Um, and then as far as diminishing returns, keep an eye on the polymorph diminishing return. Sheep the healer off the, of the poly DR, off of a kidney, off of a hammer of justice, off of a root beam, off of a fear, off of any type of CC. Full poly, burst, reset. Full poly, burst, reset. Over and over and over. So that is pretty much, uh, yeah, that's the rotation for mage. So I'm trying to think if we, we've got everything. We got the, we got the gear, the talents, stat prio, the PvP talents, the rotation. Um, general compositions you want to run. RMP, go to. RMP or RMT is going to be your, your bread and butter. I think um, I think you can play Shadow Priest Mage Holy Pally or Shadow Priest Mage Rest of Druid. I don't think it's as insane as RMP, but I think it does work. And those two are your best comps. From there, you have FMP as a Frost Mage. You have um, WMP of Windwalker Mage, Holy Paladin, which actually might be one of the better better comps is, is Windwalker, Frost Mage, Holy Pally. Um and then a bunch of comps that you could try from there, like Frost Mage Elemental Shaman, Resto Druid, Frost Mage Destro Lock, Resto Druid, or Healer, um, Frost Mage Moonkin, like all, all of these comps, but they're all like maybe not quite as insane. So, but but would highly recommend RMP, um, maybe Shadow Priest Mage, uh, and then the, the two after that, maybe Windwalker Mage Healer or Ellie Mage Healer would probably be your two after that. Um, so good luck, have fun in that. And then we're going to do, since I am live streaming right now, we're actually going to do a Q&A in the chat really quick. Chat, if you guys have any questions about Frost Mage's guide, maybe things that I missed, things that you're curious about um, in the live stream, definitely let me know. And we'll, um, yeah, we'll talk to the chat here for a second and see if we have any anything that we missed as far as uh, how to play Frost, as far as questions that um, maybe I, I glazed over. Um, someone asked, why not Frostbite? Um, Frostbite, it DRs with normal Novas. Um, not super good. Not super good. It DRs normal Novas, which means everything's immune to your Nova, which means when you actually want a Nova, you don't get to. I would not recommend it. Is there a different place that I need to change in twos and threes? That's a great question. Um, in twos, it's more about just surviving until 60 or 70% dampening. In threes, it's about actually getting those kill windows, the cross CC, the chains, the burrs, the setups. Offensive or defensive is Frost Mage. Um, I would say, huh, depends what comp you're playing. I think like, I, I would generally say it's more of a defensive spec. It's more of a dampening defensive spec. But at the same time, you do want to hit your offensive timings when you get the cross CC and burst because that's how you're eventually going to force the enemy cooldown. So it could maybe be a bit of both. A little bit about counter comps against Frost Mages. Um, 
I'd say hunters in general are hard, like survival hunters, because pet sack makes it so you can't crit. Frost mages have a lot of uh, crit based abilities based off shattering. Um, but in general, it's not just like what counters frost mage. It's like I'm playing RMP. What counters RMP? Or I'm playing shadow priest mage. What counters shadow priest mage? So it's less about what counters frost mage in itself and more about what comp you're playing. Um, how to get from 2k <laughs> to 2.2? You just have to do all the things I'm saying better, cleaner, faster, smoother. What CC puts Ring of Frost on Diminishing Return? Polymorph. And what do you do when you get zero procs? Cast more Frost Bolts to get some procs. And where can I see some handstands? Check out my Instagram. Instagram.com slash Zaryu, LOL. Great question there from the chat. Follow me on Instagram right now. Take your phone out. Go and do it. Middle of the guide. We got the Instagram shout out. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for the Q&A. Thank you so much for watching the video. Guys, thumbs the video up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't. Talk to me in the comments about any additional questions that I may have missed um, in the Frost Mage guide. And now you guys should pretty much know exactly how to play Frost Mage in patch 8.1. Thank you so much for watching.